Hi everyone, alongside Mike Trosel, I'm Dave Giancola, and thanks for joining us for another USGA Championship Classic finish. Well, the year was 1995. It was the centennial year of the United States Golf Association, and that's the year that the USGA decided to bring its premier amateur event, the U.S. Amateur, to Newport Country Club, the same place where the championship had first been played 100 years before. Yeah, Dave, and Stanford sophomore Tiger Woods, just 19 years old at the time, was the defending champion. He faced George Buddy Marucci in the 36-hole championship match, and once again, Woods fell behind in the morning round, trailing Marucci three down through 12 holes. Yeah, Tiger had cut the deficit down to one midway through the day, but just like the previous year, Woods saved his best for last. We'll join the match early in the afternoon round. Has caught the attention of these uh, record setting galleries. Buddy Marucci taking on 19 year old Tiger Woods. And uh, Marucci admitted he was fatigued yesterday in his quarterfinal and semifinal matches, which totaled 38 holes. I didn't handle it very well today. I was really tired. Uh, and I think it showed in the middle of both matches. I got a little sloppy. Um, and I don't know how I'm going to handle it tomorrow. Uh, I'm, I, am, I am tired. Physically, below the waist, I'm tired. Uh, and I, I hopefully, I'll, I'll be okay tomorrow. Hey, uh, when you, when you get older and uh, the pressure wears you down a little, there is a little adrenaline that will help out. But uh, when your legs go, then you have to have tremendous timing to make up for the fact you got dead legs. And uh, you can see this shot right here. Roger will take us through here. Roger, you right there. I'm just up ahead of him, John, and he does have a problem. He's got a very grassy lie there is. He's got a, an area that's very lush. And the grass is all twisted and gnarled around his ball. It's not that it's in deep. It's just going to be very hard to control. He does have tree trouble. He's got two trees up ahead of him. He's got himself 216 yards to the flag. I mean, he's really in a bad spot. He's going to have to either try to cut something around these trees, which would be very difficult to do from this from this lie, or he's got to keep it underneath them and try to run it up this hill. Uh, either way, no bargain. I, I wouldn't think he'd have any more than about one in 10 chance of getting the ball on the green. Well, I, the thing that bothers me the most, besides the trees and the distance, is that grass is laying dead to the right. And boy, I'll tell you, this this is gnarly grass, very strong, and it torques the club. Uh, and this lie right here is very difficult to hit it where you're aiming. Let's take a look at that uh, closely again. You can see how the, all that grass behind is laying dead to the right. He can get down into it if he could play it back in a stance, but uh, it might come out of like a Phil Necro knuckleball. Who knows what it might do? If I was him, I'd be thinking maybe the Tiger in trouble, maybe the best thing to do is just get this in play, which it looks like is what he's gonna do, and then try to get it on a three and make a tough four, but well, not have a, make a big number. Johnny, one thing he hasn't done is really walked ahead and taken a look at Tiger's ball. Tiger is dead stymied by this tree immediately in front of him and has a, a very, very difficult shot. Well, that goes with this game plan. He says, I'm gonna just play this golf course today and not spectate Tiger. I'm gonna take what the course gives me. And uh, that's what he's doing right now. The course says, hey, this lie is really tough. I'm sure he want, he's thinking what you just thought. He's thinking, well, maybe I could uh, hit the, the Seve Ballesteros heroic shot. Another part of him says, nope, 16 US amateurs that are off laying it up. Probably turned the club right over, Roger. You can see it right there, trying to catch that ball. It's in the uh, intermediate rough, and that's just sort of you get what you get in that stuff. You might have a great lie, you might have one that'll just uh, tear your wrists up. Well, Tiger now has 172 yards, and he has got a dead stymie, John. I mean, this tree trunk is right in his path to the green, so he's gonna probably have to go left of it, I would think. He's making a hand motion like he's going right, drawing it. See that, how he's turning that hand? Well, if he does that, that brings into play a bunker that's set short of the green, maybe 50, 60 yards. There's the cut motion, so he's done both. Now it's uh, be interesting to see which one he goes with. Well, if he gets it into the left bunkers, John, he's leaving himself an uphill bunker shot. If he, if he flirts with the right side and the shot doesn't come off, uh, if, 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 if it doesn't get up in the air, he could catch that fairway bunker that's well short of the green, and that's no bargain. His half swing, practice swing was a cut, so I think, like you say, the way that tree's bowed, you know, this way, 
you know, you're better off going around. I missed there a little bit, sorry, but uh, he's going, I think his favorite shot is a cut, I think, and um, that's the shot I think you like best. Yet. No looking left. There's a little Vitrovino type cut action. See the club leans that way. Looks like he's gripping down on the six iron, John. He's only got 150 yards to the front. If he can land this ball 10, 15 yards in front of this green, he can possibly run it up on there. There's a little hole right there, and that's what he's going to shoot through right there. Thank you very much. Hold up now. Great. The early, early show business beginnings of Tiger Woods. Actually, that swing of Tigers is very similar to Bob Hope's now. Very <laughs> relaxed, takes it to the top and sort of lays it on his back shoulder and then just goes through and puts it on the other shoulder. Maybe Bob is watching. Uh, Marucci. he faced with here. Uh, he's got 117 yards to the flag. He's going back, back uphill here, John. He's debating between two clubs. Ball a little bit below his feet. Distance control is the big thing here. Whether you get a sort of a flyer, a floater, or a dud, or a good one. Pretty good distance control, Roger. Not bad. That ball came out with some spin on it, Jim. It did. I, from the sound, you could tell it gripped the, the grooves. They are in three on this par four. Tiger Woods yet to hit his third. Match all squared. This is the second 18 of the 36 hole final. Buddy Barucci had a one up lead after the first 18. Now it's all square. Tiger ready for number three, Roger. Well, he's got about 35 yards to the hole. This ball will break considerably from his right to left as it works its way up the green. Got a decent line. Something that really I don't think the ball will spin too much, John, so he should be able to get this ball kind of running back to the flag. Oh, no. Released for him nicely. All right. Shot, All right. Yeah. Yeah, really good line to that particular shot, John. The ball had to release. Excellent chance now for Tiger Woods to save par. Richie's par putt considerably longer. Father nicknamed him Tiger after one of his Vietnamese military buddies. Well, I'm telling you, he's putting on a tough look right now, Tiger is. His father said, uh, gave him a lot of mental training and toughness drills, and he said, as Earl saying this, I wanted to make sure, says the father, that he had never run into anybody who was tougher mentally than he was. So he put him through all kinds of drills, talking on his backswing, throwing towels down, uh, clamoring things, uh, and then making him even ridicule him, different things just to make him tougher and thinking he was tougher than anybody. So you start looking at this game face that he's starting to put on. And, uh, he says, I'm tougher than you. I hit it farther than you. I got better swing than you. I do a lot of things you don't do, so I'm going to beat you. He told us yesterday, Johnny, uh, with all the galleries that he has played in front of, he thinks it's an advantage. He's used to hearing the chatter in the gallery, the noises being made, the camera shutters going on and off, and he believes that's an advantage over a guy like Buddy Marucci, who is uh, obviously playing in front of the largest gallery he's ever played in front of. Well, Buddy has about a 15-footer up the hill, should move from his right to left. Tenth hole's a par five, where Tiger has a big, big advantage. This is a big putt for Buddy. Oh, 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 oh. Huge 
hard putt for Marucci, and now it's a must make for Tiger. Don't you love match play? Back and forth. Yeah, it's great. That's a heck of a four, Roger. <laughs> That's an all world four. Oh, geez, this is not too shabby either from where he was in two and in one. Yeah, we're seeing some tenacity by both golfers. A couple of good scrambling cars as they get set to make the turn and head to the par 5 tenth. This match all square. Make room for these fellas. The par 5 tenth is 537 yards. It's a downhill tee shot, and uh, these bunkers are not in play for Tiger. It's a 270-yard carry to carry the left fairway bunker and 280 to carry the right, so Buddy's got to fit it right between them. Tiger can just say, see you later. Uh, you don't want to hit a left, of course, but this is definitely reachable for both the guys. For Tiger today, even though it's 537, probably hit a drive and a seven iron. If he hits a good one about right where we are now, the green is heavily bunkered. We've got a lot of tilt from back to front. Uh, really, it's a birdie hole for both these guys, a potential eagle hole also. So uh, it's a fun hole to watch. You see the hole location today on the very front. It's a very easy location except it brings the bunkers more into play but if you can hit a good shot it sort of wants to end up right where that that uh, pin is and uh, you might see one very close in two we mentioned uh, the big galleries that buddy is playing in front of today by making the finals of this u.s amateur championship he will get an invite to the masters and ten times buddy has played this hole five birdies five pars Needs to birdie this one. Quiet. Let's see if he can use his legs. You watch how much pressure uh, is on that right toe when he finishes. And uh, early in the week, he had almost all the weight off that right toe and just sitting up there uh, uh, weightless. And last few times, he's had a lot of pressure on that back foot because his legs are not driving through and his hips are not turning as much. We'll watch that right now. What happens is you, you leave it on there, he goes right, or you hit a duck hook left. Oh. Still a lot of weight. Did you see all the oh. crease in that foot? And there it is, quick duck hook. It's got to stop. It'll be inbounds and short of the bunker, John, but that was ugly. Yep, that's that that's same, a same sniper. Same swing, all that weight on the back foot. Let's take a look at that again. Uh, let's watch the swing, but you really watch this right foot here. Takes it back real nice. There's nothing wrong with the backswing. He's got a good coil. He's right on plane. Comes down here and watch this foot here. When he comes in here, he flips it over. Now he flips it with that right hand over. And watch, uh, clear that, but watch the watch how much weight's on that foot. There's a lot of foot on that. Let's see how he's leaning back. Just flipped it over to the left. It's almost like a cross-court uh, shot in tennis. Except for in golf, you only want to use the cross-court when you play for it. Big advantage for Tiger. Pretty good, Roger. What do you want, a Coke? I'll get it. Yep, a lot of people, right. a lot of people holding their head there, and uh, he might have got away with it though. See him right there. He is actually on the edge of the 12th green, if I'm not wrong. That is the 12th green. So both a uh, couple of errant tee shots. The Tiger's in good shape. They open the final nine holes here at Newport Country Club. All square, Buddy Marucci and Tiger Woods. Well, he is. He's got the ball to the left. It's not so much that it's in trouble, but he will not be able to obviously reach the screen in two. He will have to contend with the set of fairway bunkers that's furthest down the fairway, closest to the green. He's probably about 200 yards from those. So he'll have to get the ball between those. No chance to get to the green, huh, Roger? Oh, no chance. He's got over 300 and some odd yards, uh, Johnny. He, he didn't hit that tee shot very far at all. Yeah, that's, and it's, I don't see this lie he's got also that uh, sitting aggressive leaning left. And Tiger really uh, got away with going through quite a few, uh, that one grove of trees that has three or four trees in it, skirted those. And came up here in a nice flat lie with a nice opening for a high fade. Yeah, he really got a great break. It's sitting down just a slight bit in the rough, John, but it's going to be a knuckleball, and he can just hit something and bounce it into the green. He's got about 220 left of the hole. Buddy going with an iron here. 
And he's hit a good looking shot going down the left side of the fairway. With that uh, fairly easy hole location today with the wedge, he's got backboards. If he hits a pass pin, it'll suck right back by the hole. So he's going to probably have a putt inside 10 feet. You watch for a birdie. So uh, Tiger is, doesn't have a gimme here with a birdie to win. The right bunker, the bunker shot out of the right bunker is not an easy bunker shot. And he's hit a few shots in a row now to the right. The left bunker uh, is much easier to recover from. I'm sure he's not thinking of those things. He's thinking about just putting it on the green. But uh, what club, Roger? You know? I think he's got to be going with the four iron, John. Here he's got to hit a knuckleball out of this line. I think he can just bounce this ball right into the green. Got about 220 to fly. Ball slightly below his feet. Low one, Roger. Low and it looks like it's going right a little bit, John, at the right bunker shot. So the bunker shot is totally right. You see the green goes away from him there. Uh, this downhill from there if he doesn't have a good lie. Playing the par 5, 10th all square. Both players after their second shot. We'll be back for the third in a moment. City by the sea, Newport, Rhode Island. Great vacation destination resort. Little cruise out of the harbor. Quaint shopping town with cobblestone streets. America's first resort, and there are some pretty uh, good-sized mansions along the shoreline as well. As Buddy Marucci, square with Tiger Woods through 27, gets ready for his third par five tenth. Roger. Got 116 yards back into the wind. The wind has picked up a little bit. Ball slightly below his feet, but he's got an opening right at the flag. Jumping down on a nine iron. Shot. Needs to get up yeah. a little bit. Try to get balance. Good shot. He's a tough guy to beat, Roger. He just doesn't go away. He has putts like on the last hole, the ninth hole. You think you got him, and he's got enough nerve and, uh, and style and the technique to just knock him in, regardless of the pressure. Well, it's just a perfect golf course for him, too, Johnny. You know, I mean, uh, this is one of those golf courses where experience. That really goes a long way. I mean, he's he's got the little shots. He's played all these before, and, and uh, he knows he can play the golf course. I think it's made a big difference in his performance. What about this bunker shot? He's got the little bit of upslope, and it's a close one, so it's not too hard. It's a lot easier than it would have been back to the right, uh, more towards uh, the viewer's uh, front of the screen, but uh, not too tough a shot from here. Well, this is about as simple as bunker shots get, Johnny. I mean, this is the sand's very firm, easy to slip the club just under the ball. He's got it uphill to the hole once it hits the green, so uh, I'd be surprised if he didn't get this inside at three or four feet. Watch this practice when he uses much more wrist on this shot than any other shot in his bag. He'll set his wrist uh, almost right away to 90 degrees by halfway back and then use hands going through and just plop it right up in the air with a nice little uh, firm, crisp hit at the sand, about an inch behind it. Too far behind it, again, but not bad. Good shot on Roger. That was okay. I really that was the kind you could make, John. I would have expected really that he would maybe have done a little bit better from there, even, but uh, not bad. About three and a half feet. Yeah, he's hit a little behind it. You can tell by the sound, a little farther than he wanted. Both live three for Birdie. We showed you uh, Tiger at two years old on the Mike Douglas show, and of course, uh, Many of his accomplishments have been chronicled through the years at age two and then at age six, the two hole exhibition with Sam Sneed. Just common occurrences through the years of Tiger Woods, reigning age group world champion at age nine. There he is with Lee Trevino, participated in a ball striking contest at age 11, 15 years old, first of three U.S. Junior Amateur Championships, unprecedented at age 18, the youngest ever to win this championship last year at the TPC and then won the very first college tournament he entered. In fact, he won two of the first four college tournaments he entered at Stanford and then at age 19 here in Newport trying to win 
the fifth USGA title in as many years. Great stuff. Yeah, this putt from about nine feet, ten feet. We'll move a little bit from left to right. If Buddy could get out of this hole with a half, I would have to think that'd be a pretty big lift for him. It's sort of a tricky putt in that it, I'm not sure how much it'll break. It might not be definitely inside the hole, Roger. There's not a lot to it, but I think if you hit it inside the hole without enough speed, you will miss it low. speed. So now Tiger Woods has to make to have the hole at the main square. Johnny, do you really think at this stage in the match that Buddy Marucci, being that he is 43 years old, he talked about how tired he was yesterday? We you know what's interesting is he, he said yesterday that in the middle of the 36, he got a little tired, but it's funny, at the end, a lot of times you'll regroup, and at the end you play off I don't know if it's a instinct or whatever it is, but you actually get a second win. They talk about that in all sports. It happens even in golf, and he might have gotten over the worst part of uh, his, uh, his uh, you know, the tiredness. That, a couple putts like that will wake you up quick anyway. It's no gimme. Exchange birdies on the par five tenth, and this is the second straight tough 43-year-old that Tiger Woods has faced. Yesterday it was Mark Plummer as they walk to the short par four eleventh. It measures 295. And this hole for Tiger, uh, he can easily knock it in the bunker. Not this bunker that we see here, not the one on the left, but he can literally fly it on the green. He hits it that far. He's been in this bunker the last two tries. For Buddy, uh, he has a choice to either hit it where we are now in this green area here or get it somewhere between the green area and the bunker. But you don't want to be in the in the long grass short of the bunker because it's a, it's a back left hole location, as you can see, a very difficult uh, a pin placement. If you're out there, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, of course, TV washes these greens out, but that's one of the hardest hole locations on the golf course. So it'll be interesting to see if Tiger uh, can just literally just airmail uh, this bunker, which he can do, and uh, uh, knock it right on the green. Wouldn't surprise me. Roger, uh, what is the wind uh, doing any out there, if anything? Well, the wind is against the players slightly and left to right. Buddy Marucci has got a driver in his hand, and I'm a little surprised by that, John. I am too, because that front bunker with the back left pin is a very difficult sand shot. Uh, you know, you got a sand shot of about 100 feet uh, and not much green to work with, so I guess he figures he's got to give it a shot and take his chances from around the green. That was a better swing, Roger, right at the pin. That was a good swing, straight at the green. I don't believe it's going to risk those bunkers. It's short. The bunker's really he's in a good spot now, John. He can hit something out of that rough and just kind of let it work back up that hill at the, at the pin. I guess that's what he was thinking. But uh, there's a well, you got to just see this. There, there's a guy that hit a well hit driver short of the bunker. Now you got to see what, what happens right here. Difference in distance. Watch iron. this iron. I'm not sure which one he's hitting, but. What was that, Roger? Do you know? That was a three iron, John. Oh, he's just laying it up. He's just laying it up short of the bunkers as well. You a little surprised by that? Uh, I would have tried to get it up, maybe up by the green. If he could if he could drive the ball right, then really he'd have a pretty good angle of chipping back at the flag. But uh, he elected to lay it up. I'm surprised. A little different strategy used today by Tiger Woods, trying to become the first repeat U.S. amateur champion since 1983. left in this scheduled 36 hole final championship match including this par 4 11th and a reminder tonight Sunday night baseball on ESPN the Dodgers and the Phillies that gets underway at 8 o'clock Eastern time of course the Dodgers have moved into first place in the National League West we'll try and widen the gap on the slumping Rockies and Padres so 
Make sure you make plans for that tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern, right here on ESPN for some Sunday night baseball actions. Great golf action here at the Newport Country Club where Tiger Woods finds himself in a battle with 43-year-old Buddy Marucci getting ready to play his second on the short par four. Roger. Well, he's got 60 yards to the flag. He's just at the end of the fairway, right, in, right against the cut of the first cut of rough. And from there, from here, he's going to have to knock this ball down and try to skip it up this hill, John. He can't fly it up on top of there. He's going to have to try to hit that bank and have it kill it and have it skip up on top. I try to hit a, a shot that if it's just at the base of the bank, it's perfect. That that trajectory, and if I hit it too hard, it hits into the bank and breaks it even more. It ends up perfect also. So you get sort of a double breaker, a double chance here. Very thin. Pretty good shot right there. So with that. Woods puts the pressure on Marucci. But he's responded well the last two holes. How about those two putts, Johnny? Uh, clutch as can be. And, uh, you know, Tiger is doing the things he needs to do to separate himself from, from Buddy, and it's just not happening so far. The match is all square. They should just tuned in. And we're getting our money's worth. Very few boring holes down the middle on the green two putts. I mean, we're seeing nothing but action by both guys. A lot of one putting going on and uh, great saves. Chip ins. We saw chip in by Buddy a couple of holes ago. I mean, just really good stuff. Chip in on the par three eighth to win the hole. Tiger Woods uh, marking his ball. Well, I'm a little surprised by that, you guys. The ball was past the hole. All his ball could have done is help Buddy Marucci if it had struck it. Uh, I, I don't understand why we'd have Tiger mark that one. Well, maybe he just doesn't want to see it, but you know. Buddy's hit a few Aaron shots, and uh, with a little luck, you'd be three under the last four holes, and it looks like he could be two over, Roger. That's right. He's got 54 yards here. He's had a little patch of chickweed, but the lie's not all bad. So he's landing the ball on the front of the green. Got a nice hard bounce, Roger. Oh, that's beautiful. That was really well done from the lie. Yeah, that was very good. Not even bad going up with that forward bounce, but it is, it is hard. The greens are firm, which is a typical link style really the greens are more like the British Open uh, used to be uh, in the 70s before they put in the automatic uh, sprinkling systems on all these old courses the greens used to be hard as a rock but uh, I think they've slightly demasculated some of these courses with uh, the softer greens I really have well, let's get to some further uh, explanation on the marking of the ball there by Tiger Woods bringing USGA executive director uh, David Fay David uh, your thoughts on that well, I don't know if uh, Buddy asked Tiger to uh, mark his ball, but uh, remember, he doesn't have control over Tiger's ball. Tiger could have uh, chosen to mark it himself. That's covered under Rule 22. And Tiger, if he he should, under etiquette, though, have you know, he shouldn't uh, stop the match uh, with undue delay to go ahead and mark your ball, though, right? I mean, you shouldn't say the guys in the middle of his, his uh, pre-shot routine say, hey, I'm going to run up 150 yards and mark this thing. I don't like you taking advantage of me. Yeah, not 150 <laughs> yards. You know what I'm saying. But he but was pretty close to the green. There's a little etiquette there is what I'm exactly. saying. See if uh, Buddy Marucci can come up with the same velvet touch he's had the last two holes. And now uh, Buddy is calling... He's going ahead and repairing the ball mark. And this one, I don't know. I think I can just be wrong. But this one, I'm not sure. Because that can't be touched. Okay. David Fay, uh, help us out with that. Well, he's just making sure that it's an old pitch mark and uh, not something else like a uh, like a spike mark. Uh, but it seems like he, he wanted to repair uh, not one but two pitch marks. And there's no limit to, to the number of pitch marks you can repair on the putting green. It's okay, of course, to repair pitch marks, but you can't tap down spike marks. Come down here. Roger, uh, have a read on this try for Buddy. 
really kind of a funny looking putt overall. I don't think it breaks a whole lot from here, do you, John? Uh, it's a little downhill, and it comes over a crown, but it looks at the very end as though the cuts, the, the hole's kind of cut to his right, but I don't know how much it really wants to go that way. I have it as a left center putt, Roger. I don't know, uh, does that sound about right? Uh, that'd be about right. There's not much break here, but it's just kind of a strange looking putt. It's not one you can just look at and pick up the line. It's, uh, if he gets it outside the hole, I don't believe it'll come back. Well, he's got the magic right now with that flat stick and with the chipping game, so a lot of good stuff happening to him. Taking plenty of time with this, and he's knowing how close head. Tiger is. He's doing what Roger has seen. There's, uh, you're getting different looks, and uh, bottom line is if he hits it solid. I think inside left, you make it uh, most every time. And Tiger says, oh, oh. <laughs> just another day. Okay. There's a lot of lifelong amateurs that are 40s and 50s that are just, I'm sure, just saying, you got to be kidding me. This guy is unconscious right now, just making these putts, and these are clutch city. And that frustrates, has to, a 19-year-old Starlight Woods thinking he has him, and then Marucci just comes up with a clutch putt after another. Well, can you believe he's played the last four holes 300? That's what I was saying. <laughs> Just about straight in here. Well, Tiger matches it. But they have another hole. And Buddy Marucci moves closer to a potential championship. And let's set up the par 4 12 for you. Long hole, 455. You can see this hole moves a little bit left. This bunker on the right is uh, sort of an antiquated bunker for a good player. He's not going to go in there. But uh, the bunker you see on the left is about 315 yards off the tee, so the players will be just short of that bunker. And going to this uh, long par four today, uh, a little bit, I think, downwind if uh, the wind is doing what I think it is, and probably will be a five to an eight iron for these players. And the whole edge location, as you can see, is uh, front left, which is very difficult because the green falls off here, 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 and here. And it's like hitting to the top of your head. If you can get it close there, you've hit yourself one whale of a shot. We've seen some great golf past two holes. They have had them with two birdies. You might wonder if Buddy Marucci is contemplating a senior career after watching uh, his play this week. But he says, uh, you know, if they made an unbelievable amount of money out there, I might consider it. Yeah, he, he I think they're making some pretty good money out there. Seems like a lot of his decisions have to do with his banker. Let's see if he can get off the right side. Oh. Another low diving hook, John. Just watch this. Watch this. Well, doesn't look too good to me. What happens is he's throwing it from the top. He'll get up here, watch that. See if he lays a club off just a little bit. I want to check that out. He gets it back here. Check that left wrist out. It's real flat. You see right there, and he releasing a little. What happens is when you put a lot of effort into the swing going back and the first move down, what happens if you don't continue pouring on the steam, the shaft kicks, and it kicks the club over to the left. So most guys that duck hook it get quick at the top and slow at impact. There he is. Uh be a tender left shoulder, his 159th hole of competition the last six days. Is that was a two iron starting up the right side, drawing back toward the right center. Beautiful. High, really high two iron. A towering shot, huh? Yeah. Probably wouldn't surprise me if they went 290. Woods in the fairway, Marucci in the rough. All square through 29 in the scheduled 36 hole final. Welcome you back to the Newport Country Club. Dan Hicks, Johnny Miller, and Roger Malpe with you on this scheduled 36 hole finale. All square as they play this par 4 12th. And that is the ball of Buddy Marucci. 
Well, the good news, Roger, the green is with him a little bit to the left, but uh, it's definitely a tough shot with the tree in front of him. That's right, and it's in there pretty deep too, John. It's, it's gonna be hard to, to get enough speed on this ball, keep it underneath that limb and you know get it to chase on. And he hit it higher and hit just a big old going hook. I don't, I, I, from that lie, I don't know that he can get the ball to turn like that. Well, right now he's getting to be an expert at turning like that. He's been hitting some divers to the left. He almost needs a controlled uh, duck hook right here. It's interesting, you know, like you said, he's three under the last four holes and he's hit, uh, you know, three shots that were not good. So he's really scrambling and scoring like a, uh, like, you know, you'd see a 12 year old do, you know, he's just playing like a Tom Watson well, did when he was younger. Let's show you what happened earlier on this very same hole this morning, the par four 12th, the second shot of Marucci. And he plays a little Scottish guy, hits the down slope of that little ditch and gets a good forward bounce. That was a good break right there. And uh, wonderful shot there. And this was Tiger Woods second shot. A more conventional shot, very crisp, tremendous speed at the bottom, a lot of backspin. No. And watch this, it hits the side of that green and kicks all the way across on the down slope on the other side of the bunker and uh, was almost dead from there. Marucci won the hole, took his largest lead, three up at that time, ended the morning 18, one up, and now has really been battling with some clutch putting to square the match. But this uh, is a very difficult shot. This grass is uh, very strong. Uh, you, when you watch the guys hit it, it really is uh, it's almost like double strong than normal grass. Uh, it's got to be tough to grow out here in this salty air and not any, uh, any uh, irrigation. Get up. Okay. Clear, cleared the fairway bunker just in the very first cut of rough. Well, he's in the intermediate rough and pretty good lie, and uh, the way he's playing right now, uh, probably another routine par. He lives 20 miles outside of Philadelphia, same hometown of two-time U.S. Amateur champion Jay Sigel. In fact, he lives just 500 yards away. He's played a lot of golf with Jay through the years. I just put that down, didn't it? Well, Tiger's got exactly the same yardage he had this morning on this hole, 161 to the flag. This morning he elected to hit a nine iron and try to power it and pulled it left into the left bunker. This would be an ideal place for him to take maybe one more club, Johnny, and choke it down and just try to control the distance and bounce it up. Backspin here would be uh, work against him because if he hits a uh, short, it'll spin off the green. If it hits a the fall off is only four feet in front of the hole and four feet left of the hole. So anything outside four feet on the left side of the hole spin right off the green down that little swale. Keep it just right of the hole. Well, he's hit it straight up in the air again. It is right of the flag this time, Johnny. He's not going to make that mistake twice. So he's too smart for that. Where you want it because uh, obviously Buddy has got his work cut out for him. It's difficult pin placement to make a four. Tiger Woods has geared his game for this U.S. Amateur Championship. Will it be enough? Stay with us. shot of Buddy Marucci, Tiger Woods already safely on. Roger. 92 yard sand wedge. Hold on shot. Take the bounce. Oh, it's hill now. He got it. Mm -hmm. I'm in there and a little short and we rolled off the beam. That's a tough putt though right there. Well, uh, Buddy Marucci financially set. We've talked about that successful business career no pro career behind him or ahead of him, right of ahead of him, here, ahead of him. this hey, week at the u.s amateur hey. championship though he can fulfill a lifetime dream for himself i think that's everything there is to, for amateur golfers um, it's the epitome to be able to to go through these matches to meet that challenge and to uh, come out on top compete at a 
you know, at a, at a high standard. Um, it's everything. You know, all the other benefits are almost secondary. I mean, uh, you know, to accomplish this, to, to go on that trophy is, uh, I think that's all there is. It's been here 16 times the U.S. Amateur Championship. Of course, never made it this far. First championship match, round of 16. The best he's previously done. He's also played in nine mid-amateurs. He's had a lot of amateur experience, Johnny, but uh, nothing quite, quite like the spotlight of playing in this finale with Tiger Woods. Good point, because on the pro level, you got about four tournaments that are, you know, close to each other in importance. In the, in the amateur level, the U.S. amateur is so much bigger than anything else, especially here in the U.S., that it's, it is really the event, and these guys know it, and it would, you know, it's something, like I said, it uh, goes down that trophy and it stays there for who knows, forever. Can't take it away from you. Says he never wanted to be a pro when he got out of college in 1974. He looked at the leading money winner, and he was making, in his words, just $100,000. Hey, I won 353 that year. I was leading money <laughs> winner. He's a little off. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell him that. Yeah, this is the kind of putt that Tiger has. This is downhill, pretty quick putt. I think he's just going to try to lag this down close. Buddy Marucci has a very, very tough putt downhill, breaking left to right, trying to save his part from about 15 feet. So pace is the important part here. Not a whole lot of break in the putt. Might try to go a little bit to the right as it loses speed. This would be a cozy effort, right? Yeah, I don't think there's going to be any uh, big attempt to hold it, that's for sure. If I call these, in, that's great. I call these lagging with option to go in. Conceded his par four. Well, that's pretty much what he wanted to accomplish there, Roger. I think. Exactly right. I was saying, you know, earlier that we just haven't seen many holes like that where a guy hits it down the middle on the green and the two putt conceded par. Uh, just it's been uh, pretty wild the last hour. Yeah, and I think the the tenor of the matches has evolved to the point where every hole it seems like. Buddy Marucci has a big putt to try to hold to save a half or whatever, but I mean, he just keeps facing these pressure putts. And the longer that happens, you know, you, you, you can't last forever. I think every golfer really knows that inside, that sooner or later I'm not going to make one of these. And you just don't want to keep yourself in that position. You've got to get the, the momentum going your way and have some putts for wins. Well, this is a much tougher putt than the one he's been making and longer, so he makes this a uh, a little bit of luck. You can hit this great and not make it. So he needs a good putt, a little luck, and a good read. Downhill, pretty sharp left to right. No, never high enough. So the par will win it for Tiger Woods, who has his first lead since the seventh hole. And it's now one up with six to play. And we'll head to the first of a pair of par threes beginning at the 13th, 162 yards. It's an uphill par three and you wouldn't really see the green except for right where that fellow is walking right now. There's a little tongue that sticks out called little false front that gives you an idea of where the front of the green starts. The whole location today, we'll watch from the tee, you can see, just see a little peak of the green there just on line with that tower. Uh, the, the whole location today is back right, uh, and it's in a position where if you hit it to the right of the hole, it'll funnel right down to the pin. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see one of these two shots come quite close to the hole, at least when it goes by anyway. So um, it's a birdie type of pin location today, downwind. Make a hole in here. 
And you can see back here, it's a wonderful golf course. Uh, this Newport Country Club. Uh, uh, I just, I just love this course. It's 66,665 6, yards. It plays bumpy and lumpy, and you get a lot of good bounces, bad bounces. And uh, if you played here every day, especially when the wind's blowing, you'd be a complete player. It, it just really reeks of golf, just like Shinnecock does. Of course, St. Andrews. Uh, nice place to play. If you get a chance to play here. You should take, take the opportunity because it's a treat. In the first 18 this morning, Tiger birdied this hole. Now, one up. Uphill holes, uh, players have a tendency to leave it out to the right because you're on a level teeing area and then you're looking up. And in the process of looking up to the pin, when you swing, you sort of raise your left shoulder to get height on it and that blocks you out. And if you hit it right, it is very difficult. There's two bunkers on the right, very difficult bunker shots on the right if the green goes away from you. So it's starting to rain out here now, John. We've got a bit of a shower going on. Tiger has chosen an eight iron. Good looking shot, it's just right of the flag. He sure didn't like it, Roger. It was like it either hurt or he missed it or something. Like the old top. Well, I guess he didn't like it. It looked pretty good from here. Yeah, pretty much just like the t shot this morning. He's saying, gee, I thought it was a bad one and I stiffed it. Let's take a look at this swing. He sort of grooved this uh, right hand come off the club action. Takes the club, he's aiming left. He's put back right up the line, club pointing at the target. Looks good there, and he'll let go probably about right now. That looks good, and then he does the, we don't, we don't show the rest of the swing. The rest of the swing looks like a helicopter move. Tough tiger, tough guy. Rucci, in contrast, has bogeyed this hole. Two of the last three times he's played it, he did muster a par this morning. But he's going with the six iron here. Surprise, Tiger. It's, uh, does the rain stop again, Roger? Well, it's lightening up, but it still is sprinkling some. the green, Marucci in the bunker. Six holes left. Scheduled to play in this championship match. Tiger Woods, one up. Ocean shower just off the shores here of Newport, Rhode Island. Newport Country Club. As we're in the second 18 of this U.S. Amateur Championship, Buddy Marucci, there is his situation in the bunker. Tiger Woods uh, with almost a duplicate of his morning tee shot on this hole. He's got a birdie try. Roger, uh, how was the bunker shot look? Doesn't look too difficult. Well, he's got a good line. Actually, it's not a hard bunker shot at all. The middle part of this green is the lowest part of it, so this will come down and track down this hill at the flag. And, you know, it may sound silly, but this is the kind of shot that really you could make, John. Yeah, and it's, I like uh, long bunker shots after it just started raining because it sort of gets the powder out of the sand and makes it a little bit of a crisper hit. You put a little more spin on it. And uh, this right here is, uh, you know, obviously not one person's been in this bunker all day. It's only been two guys on the golf course, so it's perfect. And like I say, it runs downhill to the flag in the middle part of it, but then it goes back uphill. He's got, kind of got a backboard behind it, so not a tough shot at all. Save his par, but watch the reaction of Tiger Woods after that blast. 
And you got a blink out of Tiger. <laughs> He's almost like he escaped. <laughs> well, his eyes tell the story there. Well, Tiger this morning, we mentioned how similar the tee shot was. He was three down at this time this morning. Same hole. Had this birdie attempt to win it. Got it to drop. And is now faced with a almost exact replica of that. He was three down at the time, won the hole, also won the 14th. And that began his rally this morning. And Roger, uh, there is not a lot of difference, is there? It's almost identical. You know, try to slip away to his right, but not a whole lot of breaking the putt, but it's very, very quick from back here. He just died it in this morning, hit a beautiful putt, but it's relatively the same thing. It's interesting that he would spend this much time on it when he knows exactly what it's going to do. This is like a built-in formula that he's working off of. But it wasn't pouring this morning. It's starting to come down. It's coming down pretty hard now, and the wind's picked up a little bit, too. There's a little bit of a squall going through. It's not very pleasant out here right now. And the wind could affect this uh, putt, a little gust. He knows it's just probably just outside left edge and just sort of let it, the gravity just suck it right down in the hole. Slides by. So if uh, Marucci can get this up and down, boy, what another way to dangle off the hook. The rain may not be welcome to golfers, but uh, this golf course has been in need of some rain. You might have noticed some dry areas around the fringes of some of the fairways and rough. There is no irrigation system here at Newport. And it's been a drought here for a while in the northeast. And Marucci has it. Par from the bunker on the par 3, 13th. So Tiger Woods, lead remains one up as we continue this championship match of the Centennial U.S. Amateur. Heavy rain now off in the distance in the ocean and here on shore in Newport, Rhode Island. It's been dry all week and for a long time, but Mother Nature. The sky's opening up as we take a look at this uh, second straight par three, Johnny, the 14th. Uh, 207 yards today. The whole location's back center and the green slopes heavily right to left. So the perfect shot is to aim on the right center of the green, even right edge, and let it feed right down into that pin. You see the the whole location couldn't be more center today. Uh, it's a fairly easy location, and, but it's a tough hole with this wind. This, this morning, uh, of course, Tiger Woods hit it way left, played uh, like a 5-6 iron into the bank, a really good shot. It rolls up the hill. You won't see it. Maybe it'll actually roll back down another two or three feet closer. There it is going right now. And uh, he makes a miraculous par. Watch this. Downhill putt super fast. It looks like he's lost it right right here. Watch this. It looks like he's missed it. And then it decides, oh, well, I think I'll come back to Tiger. So not only stayed in the hole, won the hole. As Buddy Marucci bogeyed uh, from the bad. greenside bunker. Well, the play has not to been overly uh, quick today. And with the rain, it'll just even slow it down even more. Uh, uh, these guys uh, both are very deliberate. Obviously, it's a super important tournament and something they would love to win. And they're not hitting any shot recklessly they're thinking over everything so on come the rain suits for both woods with the honor tiger's got a five iron out this one down went right to left 
It's only got 186 yards to the front here, John, so... What's the wind doing? It's downwind right to left. Doesn't want to pitch this too far on the green, really. Pitch it about five paces on the green, and we just went around. Got this ball going at the right side of the green. Good looking shot if it gets the bounce. Got the bounce, should come back. Up, nope, still on the collar. Coming up in the collar. Carried it, though. Actually, maybe past pin high with that five iron at 207. Staying dry, Roger? <laughs> I've got, I'm under an umbrella. I'm sure you can hear the rain pounding away on top of it, but it's not real pleasant here right now. Well, Marucci has uh, bogey this hole three of the last four times. He's played it. Also double bogeyed it earlier in the week. And some of the gallery uh, are having a good spot high above the clubhouse, which uh, looks out just in behind the 14th tee. Buddy is, uh, plays golf at some pretty fine golf clubs. Uh, he's donning some fine apparel by Pine Valley today, a hat, a shirt, an umbrella. He also belongs to Seminole, Palm Beach, Marion. Well, he's played some good golf at some great spots. Great spot here. Choke down three Aaron going to the right side. Hey, 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 come on, ball. But he hasn't hit come this green all week. But it yeah, it's now, but will it stay? It should That's roll around the bank. Watch no. this thing go left right now. Oh, just she just strong. lifted it out. If that would have been a foot shorter, roll all the way back down behind the hole. At least it hasn't hit the green, just on the back collar. Tiger Woods is also there, and it's Woods who has the one up advantage with five to play. mentioned everything that Tiger Woods does to try to prepare himself to be the best golfer he possibly can be. At Stanford, he often would go out in the rain, still does, just to get used to the playing conditions. This in college at Stanford, and I can imagine uh, not a lot of college uh, golfers would have that kind of discipline, but that's the kind of discipline that Tiger Woods has had all of his golfing career yeah, his father has made him do things that in his mind sets him apart differently than everybody else and to be a true champion that's what you got to have that kind of mindset that i'm doing things the other guys don't do i'm, uh, I'm taught certain things other guys don't have i try different shots other guys aren't willing to try and that's why he's a standout when you say this guy's a standout that's true in every regard um, both these balls roger if they were just a foot left or uh, Marucci's a foot shorter, would have actually curled around and come much closer to the hole. It just hung up on that stuff. I sure would have. There's a lot of slope in this right side and this back side of this green, John. Both of them got a little bit unlucky, really. Because we've seen, like, Marucci's shot come right here and roll all the way back down over here. It just hung up. There's been a lot of uh, student athletes, too, that have big name student athletes that have uh, entered Stanford with a lot of fanfare. You've had John McEnroe who made the semifinals at Wimbledon the summer before college. Janet Evans won Olympic gold medals prior to college. And there was John Elway and the list goes on and on and on, but uh, none have entered uh, with a fanfare of Tiger Woods. He's had to schedule news conferences uh, with the media because there's just too many requests for one-on-ones that come through the sports information office week to week, day to day. Yeah, he's a phenom, no doubt about it. Good for golf. Exciting to watch with his distance and with his shot making abilities. And, uh, he's, he's the man to beat, just like Buddy said, he's the best player uh, in amateur golf. And he knew he had to play his best golf Buddy to beat him. So Buddy is uh, slightly away. He's got about 30 feet from the back edge, John. It's downhill will move from his left to right. Pretty quick putt for Hector, too, really. So 
Tiger Woods, one up. Rain is abating. Roger, I thought that might have somewhere in there a little flattening out, and if it would have, it would have gone in. Well, Tiger's putt coming down the hill, and that's probably a little better than 25 feet. It's more directly downhill, and it's almost with the fall of the green. It'll try to move right, but it's even quicker than Buddy's putt was. Trying to win his second straight hole. Tiger and Buddy will have to make his par. A little surprised Tiger's not giving giving him uh, this putt. Buddy kind of looked at him. Tiger looked back and walked away. But not much more than a foot here. So Tiger Woods wins one of the par threes, but Buddy Marucci halves the par three 14th. And with just four to play now, Woods has the one up lead. As we head to the par four 15th, 434 yards. It's a good hole, dog leg right. If your buddy Marucci uh, was gonna hit one of his quick hooks, he'd probably go right in those bushes on the left, which would not be good. Um, this hole right here, if you can drive it right where we are right now, like Tiger Woods might even hit a long iron off this tee, even though it's 434. The hole location you can see today is in the back center right side a little bit. The green slopes severely down this direction. And uh, it's a good hole. If you can drive in the fairway, you can make birdie here with this uh, pin location. What happened there, Dan? And again, you can see the slack winds. Uh, just uh, the little squall has gone by. And uh, conditions are good. I guess the guys can take off their jackets and their sweater vests. And, uh, and Marucci might even take his hat off. And uh, there it goes. They're starting to come off. And one of those things you don't have to. And, uh, it's getting down to the nitty gritty, Dan. Four holes left. You mentioned uh, earlier that Tiger Woods had not been extended to the 18th until the semifinal yesterday. This has the look of that. Uh, Roger, uh, really, uh, Buddy just can't afford to lose another hole. If you lose one more hole, I think the match is over. He can't, he can't afford one of those little diver duck tee shots. Uh, he's down with four to go. Uh, you can't go two down with three to go if he loses this hole. It's just not going to beat a guy like Tiger too often. Right, and three of these last four uh, finishing holes here, John, are all very demanding driver holes, this one being one of them, 17 and 18 being the other two. So he's going to have to sort out his driver quickly. And Buddy's got really three tee shots in a row that are good shots for fades, not hooks. Tiger going into three wood here. Right up the right side of the fairway. Beautiful tee shot. You can see the hang time on that ball. You're talking about eight or nine seconds uh, uh, versus Marucci's is more like four or five seconds. Even with the rain we just had, John, that ball bounced about 20 feet in the air. <laughs> It didn't soften things up much. Yeah, well, water doesn't affect concrete too much. Well, if there's uh, anything that uh, Buddy Marucci can draw on, he has birdied this hole the last two times he's played it. Again, he's got to somehow keep that face square at impact and keep uh, that shaft angle the same and, and keep from flipping that head over. See if he can do it. Thank you. 
All right, so the beauty here, right down the center of the fairway, John. Very good. I'd like to see that. If Tiger's going to beat him, I just I let's get through that bad spot. In good shape. Welcome back. Centennial U.S. Amateur Championship, the 95th edition, Newport Country Club. Dan Hicks, Johnny Miller, and Roger Maltby. Hope you're enjoying this one as much as we are. Tiger Woods has the one-up lead. And Marucci in the first 18 earlier today. Similar spot on the fairway, and he produced in his second shot earlier. Watch his forward bounce. There's a good shot. Great shot. Great shot. Great shot. Great shot. Win the hole. So two up lead. Lead was cut to one up after the first 18. And now Tiger Woods is one up with four to go. There's a game face going on right there. A lot going on in his head, and he knows that he's in control of the match right now. Not even gonna probably look when he goes by, just like see ya. And the difference in the drives, Tiger continues to walk to his. Buddy is at his ball. And that was the driver by Buddy. Well hit. And Tiger's probably, what, Roger, 50 yards by him with a three wood? Well, Buddy has 154 yards to the hole, and uh, Tiger has 112. So 40 mm. some odd yards anyway with, and, and Buddy hit driver, and Tiger hit three woods. That tells you a little something about the difference. USGA match play record, phenomenal, 35 and three. 36 and three will give him his second straight. And there are the USGA championships, the unprecedented junior amateur championships, three straight, 15, 16, 17. Last year, the youngest ever at 18 years, seven months. Marucci ready for his second. Roger. Buddy's going to go with a little eight iron here. 154 to the flag. They'll try to land this ball right of the hole. Use that slope to work it down to the flag. Wind's helping slightly from right to left. But not very much wind at all right now. Well, you wouldn't have bet that he could hit four out of 11 fairways and be just one down to Tiger when he's, uh, I think he's three under par, Tiger is. She's two under. Not that means sure. anything in match play. It's just giving an idea of the quality of play. It's a huge hop, Roger. Right? Uh, got a little unfortunate. That really took a big bounce. I think it kind of skidded John off the damp grass now. Good, well executed shot. That's the main thing. It's got to be two good shots in a row. Got to be a plus for him mentally. Only Chris Perry is the only other finalist in the U.S. Amateur Championship to play three extra matches beyond 18. Is this Lyle, right, Roger? Well, it's sitting down a little bit of a, a low area, John. It's not real good, to be honest with you. I think it's going to be kind of hard to control it. Kind of like where it might jump a little bit from here if he's not careful. He's got a sand iron. He's got that one blade of grass behind the ball. That, I mean, it's got a bullseye with moisture on it. Swiping at a bug. Father Tigers, huh? didn't have a lot of spin. That's because of that grass and that low area behind it. Yep. A well hit shot coming right back and he will get a perfect read. Perfect. Perfect read out of it. But he will on the side of Marucci and uh, Tiger wasn't exactly thrilled with that effort, Johnny. Well, he's uh, he has high expectations in his game. He's not normal, quote unquote. He got a wedge, he figured this guy right to right well, The gallery's beginning to thicken here, the drama, Buddy Marucci. 
One down with four to go, and they've announced the final five selections to the 1995 Walker Cup. Nota Begay, third, who is Tiger Woods' Stanford teammate, has already been announced, but there's uh, five names you previously might have not known about. Jerry Corville, Chris Cox, Trip Keeney, who Tiger Woods defeated in last year's championship match, Florida, and Buddy Marucci is on the team along with Chris Riley. And they'll be playing in a couple of weeks at Royal Portocal and Portocal, Wales. Strong team. And they'll be taking on, of course, Great Britain, Ireland team. Where are you, Roger? I'm just right behind Buddy's ball looking down the line of the putt. It's got a lot of break from left to right, John. Yeah, it does. Downhill, big sweeping break. The marker, Tiger's marker, just just barely out of his line or right on the money? Well, no, it's out of his line. It's a little bit left of his line. I don't think he can start it that high, but it's, it's close. I think he's going to make a move it, though. He is going to make a move it. It's close. If he's going to play a big sweeper to the right, big old slice butt, it probably just would have been inside of it. You'd think if it was an inch inside it, he'd be used it as a sort of like a, a bowling marker. To just put it just inside that marker and then let it take a right turn. <laughs> guys check it out from every angle, don't they, Roger? They sure do. At this point in time, you might as well come this far. Who knows when the next time you're going to get natural T TV exposure, huh, Roger? That's <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you can see the gallery ringing in the fairway just in front of the screen. One of the uh, great things about amateur championship play is we follow up right through the fairway and watch these golfers battle it out up close and personal. I haven't seen too many bad putts out of this man. I'll tell you what, he's got the nerves of a teenager. They throw it out there, perfect pace and line in order to make it. He's aiming this ball at least five feet right. Oh. It was in, just had to hit it, Roger. Just to hear more speed, he took the right one. Take that knowledge as he remarks. Well, he did get a teach, but there's so much break in this putt, you almost don't, you almost wonder how much good that does. Well, he knows it might be a little slower than it looks. That uh, might help. And a little bit of water will uh, cause a little resistance, hydroplaning. So it could be the difference between Buddy making that and not making it. to go two up. Looks pretty good. Looking pot here. <laughs> Coming to Buddy, that one smart. Well, that was a little unexpected for most people. Two up. That's the kind of putt, Roger, you, if you're putting well, you make it, what, one out of six times or something? <laughs> I don't know if I can make it that much. I'm saying when if you're putting well, you know. Yeah, that's true. The greens are perfect. They're the only ones out there today, and you watch this. This is an Augusta kind of putt. You have to have perfect speed as well as one does he knows it's in already it's halfway that reaction yes. looks an awful lot like on the 17th island green at the tpc at sawgrass last year and there's the reaction of buddy marucci all he can do is gather himself and head to the par 4 16th two down with three to go well now now it's a case of making uh, some pars and uh see you know, if i have you that's all you need about right now, Roger. Get it in play. Get a uh, smart shot 
uh, short of the hole and make your par or birdie and uh, move on. You know a club, Roger? Like 300 or something? I think it's a 300 gun, yeah. I just try to lay this ball up the left side of the fairway. Gives you a little better angle looking at the flag. There's a hill. If you hit it up the right side, it'll kind of hide your view of the green. It is OB right and a little ditch left. The one you see on the right side curves over and goes down the left side. Backing off again. You see that all week uh, from Tiger. Always having the discipline to back off. The little boy got stung in the gallery yesterday. Started crying. Tiger smiled, backed off, and he sat. Center, fading slightly, but perfect position, perfect play. Remember, he can close it out on this hole if he wins it. A little quick hook, if Buddy were to hit it, would be devastating for the match. It could be over right here, so he needs one of those good ones like he hit on the last hole. side needs to kick a little left. Good shot. In the fairway for Buddy Marucci. Welcome back to the shores of Newport, where it all began 100 years ago. Play the very first U.S. Amateur Championship here, and 100 years later, Tiger Woods is on the threshold of becoming just the ninth golfer in history to successfully defend. And back in February of 92, he said this. He says, I want to be the best ever. I don't want to know whether I'll achieve it or not. Don't know if I will, but it's a hell of a goal. I think I'd be more worried if I set too low a goal and achieved it too easily. Later on, he said that was just a dumb little kid talking is the way he put it as he has backed off such boisterous quotes as of late but that's actually the goal in his heart is just what he said there but then he said it was stupid that he said it because it puts more pressure on him it's better to just keep that quiet and uh, and do it which he is so far at his age he has the greatest record uh, in history of the game and that's that's a good start to that goal he wanted roger tigers left himself 115 yards from the hole the pins on just eight paces johnny that water is right in front of the green. I would think he would be well served to hit this ball past the flag and make Buddy take the chance. Buddy would have to play at the flag at that point mm -hmm. and uh, flirt with that water. So he's got a sand iron here. The wind's blowing a little left to right. Just a nice solid sand iron past the flag would get the job done. I'm not sure how he thinks, you know, like I said, he's in another league in some ways in uh, all areas he does. And right here, right here he might say, hey, I don't want to go one more hole. This is a wedge. I'm going to knock it stiff, and this baby's over. Nice sounding shot. Got it going right of the flag, center of the green. Well deep. Man, that's a long sand. Well, he had 115 to the hole, so he flew at about 125. <laughs> <laughs> and way up in the air, it wasn't like it was hooded and back in the stance and trapped and hooked and I, sculled and all that. I mean, that was just up in the air normal. Yeah, I hit him 125 in the sandwich about five grooves down. <laughs> <laughs> Have to replace the ball after you do it. Yeah. Buddy's hit just a perfect drive. This is just what he needed. He's left himself. This is just what he needed is right. He's in a perfect position to win this hole. After a good gutsy drive, he has to win this hole. That's what it is. He's got 87 yards to the flag, so 79 carries the water, just a comfortable sand iron. Ball's really a good yardage for this shot. Ball sitting up well. On the TV, it doesn't look too wonderful. Mm, it's not bad, John. It's really kind of OK. I, I think this is the kind of one he can spend the ball to anyway. Good. 
Okay, buddy. Put up those 16 years of experience here in the U.S. Amateur together and uh, finish with uh, a couple birdies and who knows what might happen. Looking pretty good. That's a good play. Good time for a clutch shot from Buddy Marucci. Hanging on here at the 16th hole. Stay with us. There is the situation, 19-year-old Tiger Woods, two up with three to play, and they are playing the par four, 16th. Buddy Marucci has given himself a pretty good chance at birdie, and uh, Tiger Woods has a long opportunity, Roger. He's got about 40 feet, man. Not a lot of break in the putt. May try to eke a little bit right from the back part of the green, and then as it slows up, move back a little bit to the left, but overall, not, not too much, slightly downhill. But it is 40 feet. Two putts from here would be pretty good. That was a super clutch putt on the last hole. Uh, you know, he's, he's done that so many times from that distance, and uh, it's a difference in these matches. Bottom line, that was a huge win on the last hole to get two up with three to go. Serious concentration going on there. He's trying to get the feel of that putter with the right hand for pace. He's made him mark. I'm surprised. That one. I'm very surprised. And I would think if Buddy missed this putt, he would still give it to him. I mean, this is one you, you wouldn't make anybody putt. Well, there's George Sr., Buddy's father, who flew in to watch his son play in this championship final for the first time. Buddy, who uh, said he didn't want to turn pro coming out of college, went to work for his father, George. got into the commercial real estate business and uh, has been very successful off the golf course and on it. Roger, what, right edge, inside right? What is this? I think it's just inside right, Tony. This is really a simple putt. There's not much to it, except for the fact that it's to, to really kind of stay alive in the U.S. Amateur. Tiger elected not to watch that. Hear his father say he gave away the hole. When he says that he means he uh, played the wrong break, I guess. See how important that putt was. Son and father. And that has the hole, so two up with two to go, and uh, Tiger Woods is dormy. In other words, he cannot lose this match. On 18, the only way he can lose it is if Buddy Marucci is able to extend it beyond 18. Sort of hard to believe that these guys are taking as many practice putts as they have. They've gone three straight days of uh, Two rounds apiece, but uh, they're going over to the tough 17th hole, Dan, and uh, and that hole right there, as you can see, 441 yards. There's bushes on the right, two bunkers to negotiate. You hit a poor shot to the right. This tree on the left is in play, and it's gotten a lot of business. You can drive it right here at the corner of the dogleg. It's a great hole right here. You go into this 441 with 
for Tiger, maybe a mid to short iron for Buddy. It's probably a long iron to mid iron. And you can see the whole location today is in sort of a, a nice back right center whole location, both bunkers. Uh, you can get it up and in. There is a hidden creek over to the right, right by the carts. There's a little creek over there. You see that little creek? And it's only about 50 feet right of the pin, and that is in play if you hit it in the rough. No water in it, though, just um, a marked off area. Going back to this uh, actually two pretty strong finishing holes. The 18th is not long, but it's a tough diagonal fairway, and this one is. Uh, what's the wind today, Roger, right now? Well, it's against the players and maybe slightly left to right, John, but mostly against, so it's going to play uh, quite a bit longer than it did yesterday. See, Buddy, uh, he is uh, not exactly rushing this thing today. Pacing himself. 43 years old, as we said several times, and uh, conditioning and uh, the legs could be a factor for him, even though in the last few holes he's starting to hit it better. He was having problems with occasional right and several sort of quick hooks off the tee. Peanut low, Roger. Four pars this week on the 17th for yeah. Tiger. I think he's probably going to go with that uh, his bread and butter shot, which is he does a little bit more reverse C yeah. on the follow through and hits sort of a towering high fade. Low, you have more of a tendency to fade it. He's trying to get his line picked out. And decides to go with the iron. That's a big change of thinking right when you're just about ready to, to do your thing, Roger, to go from a driver to an iron. It's not like he went to, to a three wood. Nicholas would a lot of times go from driver to three wood or from three, three wood to one iron, but not from the big one to the other one. Well, I am a little surprised because the wind just freshened up a little bit. It's a little more against him than it was when he was first on the tee. So, kind of a surprise. A little fat, Roger? Come on. No, it sounded pretty good going up the left side of the fairway. He just took quite a divot for, you know, one iron teed up. And he got a lousy mm. little hop right into the, lousy the, bounce to the primary rough. rough. So, that, that smarts yeah. there. Mm -hmm. What's this right here? Let's take a look at this. I'm going to see if this divot is where it's supposed to be. I guess it is, but it really goes down. Look at how much down he went into that. Man, look at that ground flap. The only guy I've seen that does makes the ground go up three feet in the air is John Daly. Two bogeys, four pars to go along with one birdie. With Buddy on this tough par four. Stay with it, Buddy. He likes it, Roger. Good looking tee shot, John, up the left center of the fairway. Well, definitely in better shape than Tiger, but Tiger's two up with two to go. Tiger hustling off of the 17th. Maybe for good reason. For a little bit of relief. We'll be right back to Newport. Woods, two up. Tiger Woods is dormies. Got the two up lead with two to play. On his way to Stanford for his sophomore year. And the Mike, speculation the will pet. continue on whether Tiger Woods will turn pro. He insists that uh, that decision will be made further along down the line. Says he's just not physically ready for the demands of the PGA Tour just yet. Yeah, he's got plenty of time for that. Hoping that he doesn't uh, think uh, he needs the higher competition to keep his improvement going. And that would probably be the determining factor. Well, we know that uh, all the money, that endorsement that awaits Tiger Woods when he decides to go ahead and go pro, it uh, should be phenomenal. But now in the uh, rough on 17, Roger had a chance to scout it out. Well, he got a terrible bounce in the fairway here, Dan, and it's gotten just into the primary rough, and it's not a very good lie. It's sitting down. The grass is tall, a couple inches behind his ball. The ball's below his feet. He's got 211 to the flag. This is a, this is no picnic right here. The problem with laying it up, 
always has been in any USGA championship or major championship. You lay it up and have it hit in the rough. Now you're so far back that the rough dominates you uh, versus the fact that Tiger would have driven it down the left side with his driver. He could have had this lousy lie, but big deal. He'd been hitting an eight or nine iron. He could handle it. Talked all week long about uh, how physically grueling this is for 43-year-old Buddy Marucci, but Tiger Woods says he got up at 5 o'clock in the morning yesterday. He's staying 40 minutes away from the course, got up at 5.30 in the morning today, and uh, you know, not left the golf course until late in the afternoon, early evening. Same thing about Tiger Woods, and he's on West Coast time. But try that one. Try getting up at 5.30 when it's really 2.30. Upright swing will be an advantage here. Uh, Roger, can you tell what he's hitting? It doesn't look like a lot of loft there. Yeah, I think he's got about a four in Johnny. He's trying to get this ball to scoot. Like you say, his upright swing will help a lot, but uh, this is going to be a hard one to catch solidly. It'll be very easy to catch this one heavy. This could go anywhere right here. Went with the low uh, one. He's hit it very, very low, running between the bunkers. It'll come up well short, however. Seems to be sitting up in that rough. Yeah, but that, that's still almost impossible to get the right distance with that kind of a sh uh, lie and shot. Uh, so uh, let's take a look at this again. Watch this upright swing right up. Look how high his hands are, like David's love. Comes right down, no wrist action whatsoever. But uh, to be honest with you, a four iron at a long rough is not usually the most uh, wonderful play in the world. Usually, my rule if I'm in the rough, it's, it's a five, six, seven, eight, nine wedge, or it's a five or seven wood. But anything anything longer than that, I don't play. Roger? But he's going with a four wood. He's got 199 to the hole, right on hard pan, right on the burnt down part of the fairway, which is perfect. Oh, good golf shot. They like it. So oh, it's, it's a good looking shot. shot. It is right at the flag. Bounding up on the green, and look at this. What a shot right underneath the hole. Buddy, what a shot. Buddy Marucci has given himself another life. Thank you, Dave. Pretty good race going here on this track in Newport as Tiger Woods getting set for his third of the par 4 17th with Buddy Marucci safely on with a great fairway wood shot. Roger? Well, he's got 72 yards to the flag. Not too bad a lie, really, in the rough. It'll be hard to get any spin on the ball, which I think really helps him here, John. It's into the wind, and he can land the ball short of the hole and kind of let it release back to the flag. Yeah, this old thing like you uh, have noted and I have is uh, the distance control here that you can, if you're going to hopefully hit the face, uh, hopefully you get a nice solid contact so you get uh, good distance control. The grass was a little wet from the rain earlier. doesn't like it. Uh, he's hit it left. And you can see that uh, the ball did not grab up the grooves too well, and um, he's got a tough par putt slider. Yeah. Buddy Marucci, the 43-year-old business executive, has no pro career, will not, but has had the week of his life here at Newport Country Club. He got a great ovation as he came up to this par 4 17th has a chance at a birdie against the 19-year-old golf phenom, Tiger Woods, who many believe has several major championship victories ahead of him, trying to repeat and win his second straight U.S. Amateur Championship. He did it in dramatic fashion last year at the TPC in Sawgrass. One of the most unbelievable comebacks in the history of this championship and is trying to not let Marucci Wriggle away here. In case you just tuned in, uh, Tiger Woods has him dormy. He's two up with two holes to go. Uh, the advantage on this hole, though, is definitely in the favor of uh, Buddy Marucci after two great shots with two woods. Uh, uh, he's actually Tiger still outside those two fine shots by Buddy. So it looks like we might be going to the 18th hole, which is the 36th hole um, of the match. Unless Tiger can make this, and even then, but he'd have to miss a very easy uphill putt, huh, Roger? Well, it's pretty much straight in, the putt that Buddy has, but uh, 
I don't know how easy it would be if Tiger made this. No, but I'm just saying, <laughs> he's got it. If you're going to be, what, 12 feet from the hole, that's the 12 feet you want. Absolutely. It's a perfect position, right dead underneath the hole. Tiger's got a pretty tough putt here, though. It's downhill and going across a bit of a crown. It looks like the kind of putt, if you got it too far left, it might even go a little left, but I think the tendency will be for the ball to go right. There is Earl Woods well beyond this gallery ringing the green. You have some pretty good axioms for uh, Tiger. He says, care and share, expect the best, prepare for the worst. And he began their barnstorming junior circuit tour six years ago, program programming Tiger to become the best golfer in the world. right there was a little crown right in the middle of his putt John and it was, uh, it was a pretty hard putt to make so a two putt for Marucci should do it should do it there is his right wife Sarah also looking on showed your dad George senior a moment ago there's George yeah things looking up <laughs> Well, to be honest with you, Buddy had a great birdie if he just tuned in on the last hole opportunity and did not make it a right edge putt about the same length. It's a bit of a formality here. Marucci <laughs> wins 17, and this match will head to the 36th hole of this championship match. And the par four, 384 yard, 18th awaits. You can see it's a dog leg left. Uh, the bushes are definitely in play on the right. Uh, you need to fit a drive between these bunkers uh, for most players. And a lot of players do hit it in the right rough because they go through the fairway. Tiger can go right over everything if he wants, but most likely it will be hitting an iron from about where we are now into the screen, about an eight, nine or a wedge to an elevated green that rises about 30 feet. Uh, the bunker on the right is not a big problem. The pin, though, is back right today, uh, and uh, it's a very interesting hole. You have to hit two very fine shots, and the key is definitely the drive. If you can drive in the fairway, it's a birdie hole with that pin placement where it is today. And the same position for Marucci as he came to 17, again here at 18. He has to win the hole to extend the match, and Tiger Woods is in the same position he was in a year ago. He was one up with one to play over Trip Keeney, and he ended up winning the match two up. I bet if there were stats on the, the holes that are the hardest to hit off the tee, Roger would, I'd put this at the top of my list. I just, you don't see too many. They're tired at the end of, the, especially 36 holes. That's a narrow little uh, driving hole. Fits a nice little draw, I guess, or straight. Uh, otherwise you run through the fairway. Well, I think it's got to be one of the hardest driving holes in the golf course, John. Usually the wind would be left to right here, which really makes it hard. But I think it's helping the players a little bit. The wind's coming out of the right. Mm -hmm. It'll help them shape the ball into this uh, right to left fairway. Well, hopefully uh, Buddy can hit one more tee shot here, and hopefully he'll have to hit another one on number 10, which is the first playoff hole, huh, Roger? Yeah. Well, his last three swings with the driver have all been terrific. Mm -hmm. Much better. And while Marucci has played this hole six times, Tiger Woods has uh, only played it three times. So Marucci's had uh, more experience here. Let's see who prevails with the tee shots here. Got this ball going up the right side of the fairway. Pretty good bounce, but heading heading toward the right rough. Just in the, the primary, uh, the intermediate rough, I'm sorry, the first cut, which is just about an inch and a half long, a nice uphill lie, and a very good opportunity for birdie. Yeah, that puts the heat back on Tiger now. 
That is the 165th hole Rucci has played this week. Mm. That's a marathon for a 43-year-old. He has, doesn't have an ounce of fat on him, though. He's as thin, darn near as Tiger Woods. So it's a pretty rare occasion when you find a guy that's uh, it's in the 40s, he's got money, and no belly. <laughs> he's played... A 11 more holes than Tiger has. This is the 154th for the teenager. Tiger going with a two iron. Drawing at that left fairway bunker. Has carried it though, should be in terrific shape. Perfect shot, Roger. Gee, that's his clutch. Clutch shot. Welcome back, 95th U.S. Amateur Championship. And another look at the Tiger swing on 18, Johnny. Look at how far back in the stance he's playing this uh, two iron. Almost center of the stance, and watch, he hits it on the downswing and just nails a line drive with a little bit of a draw. You can see how low that ball is, and watch this. It looks like he's going to hit the bunker. It just carries it by five feet, hits the down slope, and now is, you couldn't place it more in the center of the fairway. Record crowds this week have flocked to the Newport Country Club. Match play is a wonderful format. I don't think there's, uh, I think the you see it a little bit in the Ryder Cup, and people have totally fallen in love with the, the format, along with alternate shot and better ball. But uh, there's nothing like match play, especially when you end up with uh, some peop uh, people on the final match that you really care about. That's the only thing problem that the, the organizers or the sponsors of tournaments shy away from because they're afraid they're going to get two guys that people just don't want to see. Let's get back to the shot, Roger. Well, he's got 165 yards to the flag, John. He's, hmm. he's got a little bit of the ball sitting down in a hole. Uh, which may which may work out for him because the ball might come out of here with no spin and be able to land it on the front level and run it back to that pin as opposed to having having the ball spin back off that hill. It's well, let's take a look on the screen where there's a little tear that's uh, riding right in this area, just below that. So he has to hit just short of that lower level, one hop on the top, and then trickle up to the the uh, whole location. So he wants to land it on that first third of the green, about 25 feet short. Maybe 30 feet short. Well, this green sets up about 20 feet above the level of the fairway, so they'll have to depend on the reaction of the fans to know where the ball ends up. Yeah, when the green's elevated, the greens usually are firmer because they drain better, and the, the ball comes in on a lower trajectory because of the height difference, and it comes in and bounces more. Six here, got the ball going low and at the right side of the green. Got a forward bounce, Roger. He got away with it. It's going to pull it in there. He's got a chance. He's not over yet. 49 to yet another breath of life is uh, Buddy Marucci. He's saying, well, it wasn't pretty, but it got the job done. Uh, Tiger after the spectacular iron shot off the tee. Roger, what does he have left? Well, he's got 150 yards left of the flag. He's got an eight iron. He's going to have to hit this pretty solid, try to hit it real high and land it on that back tier. Wouldn't surprise me, Roger, if he knocked this thing a foot from the hole. Good-looking shot drawn right at the flag. Oh, right over the flag and checking up and coming back. <laughs> what an impressive shot. And let's face it, the galleries have flocked here. Almost solely to see Tiger Woods in action as he strides up 18. 
threshold of another championship. Uh, ooh, another prediction. I think it's a foot and a half. What a shot. What a shot, and what spin, too, Roger. Tremendous spin. Look at how close he stands to the ball, straight up the line, straight down, traps it. A little tiny bit of a draw, which has the most spin with a short iron, right over the top of the pin. Like Roger, like he said, and look at the spin. That is uh, the stuff that the uh, champions are made of, and he is definitely the best player, best teenage golfer in the history of this game. Setting. Roger, that get your attention? Uh, that was real good. <laughs> <laughs> you called it a foot when it was in the air. I thought he made it. Well, Buddy Marucci has to somehow roll this in. You have any kind of chance. You have any kind of chance and then hope. Well, I'll tell you what, win or lose, he did not lose this match. I mean, this guy, this guy played one whale of a match uh, today. He's under par for the day. He's clutch shots like he's on 17. The putt at 16 was huge. Uh, Tiger making the big downhill around 15, and then him not making that easy right edge putt at 16 from 12 feet under the hole. But uh, he's a great par at 17. Probably could have made birdie if he needed it. And now he's sitting here with this hooking putt uh, the green has severe uh, uh, slope on this one down this direction. Uh, so his putt will break quite a bit to his left. And uh, it's just a speed putt. If he wanted to sort of knock it four feet by, he probably could only play it five, four or five inches out. If he hits it easy, probably could throw it out there double that. And he hasn't hit what I call a choke putt all day long. His buddy Marucci definitely rose his game up a couple no notches, uh, raised his game up a couple notches. They had great playing today. Knock it in there. Amateur Championship. An encore performance by the 19-year-old Phenom. Congratulations, tears of joy. Uh, Defended um, your U.S. Open uh, or U.S. Amateur Championship and uh, five USGA titles before the age of 20. Some performance. Oh, thanks. Uh, I, I don't know what to say. I, I, I played played smart today. You know, um, I hit some bad shots early, but I, I just hung in there, kept patient. You know, something that uh, I've been working on all year, and it finally paid dividends. And that knockdown shot was just a product of uh, hard work on 18. Well, congratulations on a job well done. Back to you, Dan. Tiger Woods continues to rewrite 
golf history, and he is still just a teenager. It's been a great week at the Newport Country Club for Johnny Miller and Roger Maltby. I'm Dan Hicks saying so long from Newport, Rhode Island.